Hi there, welcome to the fourth and final Building Your Creative Community workshop. Uh, today's topic is Your Wider Community. The workshop series is co-presented by Happy Mag and the City of Sydney and it is all about uh, helping the youth of Sydney build successful music communities. And now that we have sort of covered a lot of the basics of building these communities, working with other people, uh, talking about the organizations that are there to support the music industry, today we're going to talk about how you keep servicing this community, how you sustain this community, how you interact with fans, how you work with others a bit more, and a, a few more tidbits like that. Um, and now just introducing ourselves. Hi there, I'm Tom Cameron. I am the music editor at Happy Mag. And I'm Claudia Schmidt. I'm the news editor at Happy Mag. And we're also going to be joined by Timmy Temple, who is a indie musician based in Sydney. Um, a couple of the topics we're going to be covering today, we're going to be talking first with Timmy Temple about interacting with fans online. Uh, we're going to be talking about being mentored as a musician and also uh, being a public figure and being a bit of a mentor yourself. And then last, uh, lastly, we're going to talk in a couple of broad strokes about sustaining this community that you've created around your art. And we're also going to be answering questions. So if you have any questions about anything we talk about, uh, just drop that question into the comments and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Cool. So kicking things off, we're going to be talking to Timmy Temple, who, as I said, is a indie musician. He's based in Sydney. We chose, we wanted to talk to Timmy because he has a really great online presence and he really does interact with his fans in a genuine way. He also does a lot of his uh, content himself. He films it, uh, he takes a couple of his photos and edits stuff himself. Uh, so he's a really good person to talk to in terms of these ways that you can interact with the people who follow you on your social networks. So, uh, hi Timmy, how are you? Hello, my beautiful friends. Hey Timmy, uh, tell us a bit about you and your music before we get started. I'm Timmy Temple, a DIY artist from Sydney, Australia, uh, with a mad love for baby blue, snakes, and questionable footwear. Uh, my music is a collage of rock, garage, surf, and indie. And I mix, produce, write, and record all of it here in my Baby Blue studio. Nice one, Baby Blue for the win. And uh, Timmy, what channels do you mainly use to interact with your fans? And do different channels have different advantages? I mainly interact with my fans across Instagram, main feed, and stories, and Facebook. Although lately I've been feeling a mega urge to do more long form content and start posting regularly on YouTube. Yeah, long form video is performing well across all platforms at the moment. Um, I think one thing people worry about is how much is too much when it comes to posting on social media. I think the frequency that you can post these days depends really on the content that you're pushing. So for instance, if you were just telling all your fans and audience, go buy my song, go buy my merch, go stream it here, etc., cetera, et cetera. Um, I feel like two times is too often already. Whereas if you're able to deliver unique and engaging content, I would be putting it out as often as it came because then you're able to build momentum um, and audience engagement. Definitely a cool thing to think about. For sure. And um, do you use any tools to help with this stuff? Uh, anything from your calendars to notes or any software you might use? I don't really use any specific tools to help with posting on my social media. Um, however, I do have in my phone a notes section dedicated to an editorial calendar. So anytime during the week that I might have a good idea of what to post or content to post about, I'll write that down in there. Um, sometimes, yeah, I might have days where I'll just come up with 10, 20 ideas. And then if there's other days where I'm kind of feeling a little bit flat and can't think of what to post, I can just jump into that list. Um, of pre-produced editorial stuff and then pull it out there and then post it online which is pretty cool. I think as far as software editing goes though, um, having a pretty good grasp on Photoshop and on a movie editing, video editing suite, something like iMovie or Final Cut Pro um, will definitely definitely help. I feel like video content um, gets a lot more engagement so definitely being on top of your video game is pretty important. Solid points. Um, yeah a lot of 
uh, software is really easy to get your head around these days thanks to YouTube tu tutorials. Yeah, you can actually learn pretty much everything on YouTube these days. That kind of leads into our next question, Timmy, um, which is without uh, funds or label backing or maybe management, uh, are there any ways that someone who's DIY like yourself can still make their channels look top notch? Yeah, so I mentioned before, I'm a DIY artist. I have no label or management. Uh, it's just one snake team here at Timmy Temple Land. And I think it's 100% possible to deliver top notch content without the use of a designer or publicist. I think what it boils down to is the willingness to learn how to do all these jobs yourself. One thing I'm super stoked about the Timmy Temple branding is I've got this DIY ethos. So what that allows me to do is not only deliver a finished product, but also deliver the BTS, the behind the scenes, the making of, the process, the progress of all of these finished things. So whether it be a song, music video, artwork, I can show how I did all of these things. And that allows me to have multiple bits of content throughout the process. So then I'm not kind of just every three months disappearing and coming back being like, hey guys, here's a new song, bang, disappearing for three months again, coming back, hey guys, here's a new music video, something like that. I think when we think of top notch, we need to we need to abolish this idea that it needs to be, you know, cinema level videos or like magazine level press shots. It's more about a commitment and consistency to a branding of your own. Yeah, that's a very real way of interacting with fans. Um, was there anything you did when you were getting started with Timmy Temple that you were like, man, I'm never going to do that again? There were so, so many times where I had, man, I should never do that again moments for Timmy Temple in the early days. I think number one of which was posting day to day and not thinking forward with my content. Um, the amount of anxiety and stress of that caused absolutely devastating, just permanently chasing my tail. So yeah, think forward with your content. If you can dedicate one day, um, whether it be a Sunday or whatever, where you just plan your week's worth of content ahead of you. Something really cool you can do um, is Go out for a photo shoot, you know, take 10 different bunches of outfits and then shoot them all, save all of those into a folder and then call that folder not used. And then each time you use one of those photos, you can pull it out uh, and put it into a used one. So then you'll always kind of know, okay, I've got this amount of photos left just in case you run out of content. Boom, you can post up a crisp little photo. Um, another thing that I would never do again is try and recreate someone else's successful content. Um, my content, snakes, branding. If I was to cut out a bunch of snakes out of cardboard boxes, spray paint them, and then glue them all around a venue for um, a single launch I was gonna do, my audience would be like, oh yeah, cool. That totally makes sense. He's DIY, loves snakes. All of this fits, right? But you can imagine if some other band just randomly did that, they'd be like, their audience would be like, what is this person doing? Same goes for if I just suddenly started to do a whole bunch of TikTok meme dances on my Instagram feed. My audience would probably be ostracized and alienated. And if I did get any new fans, um, they would only be there expecting to see meme content from TikTok. And so if I try to post some of my music stuff, the engagement would be really poor. And I can imagine that would be wreaking havoc on your algorithm. <laughs> Thanks for the transparency and honesty there, Timmy. Um, is there any other advice you'd have for young musicians while you have the floor? I think honestly, the best piece of advice I can give for all of you lovely people watching out there is to think of five things that make yourself a unique human being that have nothing to do with your music at all. So my five things would probably be the color baby blue, um, a love for wearing Crocs, uh, a love for snakes, uh, DIY arts and crafts and obviously eating breakfast late. So what's the importance of this? Well, let's imagine it's Sunday morning and you've had a big Saturday night. You're going out with your mates and you're having breakfast late and someone's like, oh shit, this reminds me of the Timmy Temple song, 2 p.m. for breakfast. Then they post a story, tag my song and boom, it's out there. So being sort of intrinsically connected with this idea of having breakfast late with a song means that I'm always in their minds whenever they're having this you know, breakfast late. Same thing goes for snakes. So whenever people see memes of snakes or they see a snake in real life, I'll get tagged in stories where they're posting on Instagram and they'll tag my song, Snake Boy, things like that. 
Um, same go for memes of, yeah, these crocs. It's all these little connections that have to do with things people see in their daily lives that have nothing to do with my music, but it kind of relates back to me as an artist and things that I love and sort of stand for. for sure. mm. I think that's a really, really powerful thing is to not force yourself to be reminded by people, but have them remind themselves, I guess, just from these little connections with things that they see every single day in their daily life. So yeah, definitely think of five things that make you, you, things you love, but have nothing to do with your music and see if you can double down on that, really, you know, smash it into all of your content Make sure that you're subliminally reminding your audience that those are five things that make you you and different. That's awesome, Timmy. Um, we see how much love you put into your online presence. It's definitely a full-time job, but definitely worth it, and it all comes down to just being yourself. Sweet. Um, thanks heaps for joining us, Timmy. We'll be following you online, and for everyone else out there, Timmy Temple's latest single is Far Far Fading. came out in April. It's uh, worth a listen for sure. Thanks so much. Cool, we're going to talk a little bit more about um, interacting with fans online because uh, there was a couple of things that we just didn't cover there that I think still bear some mentioning. Um, Timmy did mention that uh, keeping your assets uh, on file, so he mentioned photos, but I think there's a lot of other things that you can keep on file um, and the main thing for me has always been data. We've mentioned this in other workshops before. Uh, what I mean by that is anything from a list of emails of people who uh, have bought your records or merch or uh, using Spotify or Facebook or Instagram to know where your fans are located. Uh, all networks have that information and the third point is keeping everything well organized because um, this start kind of stuff can be quite complicated uh, and if you keep it all in a folder. I think Timmy said he used, has a used and unused photos folder, which is a great piece of advice. But keeping all this stuff well organized for yourself is gonna make it uh, a million times easier to deal with down the line. Absolutely. Yeah. Do you do any, do you have any folder organization tips? Um, look, I don't think I'm someone to look up to when it comes to folder organization. I've definitely got folders and organization but not of the highest standard um, but yeah I, I do my best to keep everything on file um, it's definitely yeah heaps handy and the used and unused folder idea sounds good I'll probably adopt that yeah thanks Timmy um, Timmy talked about using Facebook and Instagram mainly um, those channels are definitely his strongest but that's not to say other uh, social networks aren't valid uh, there have been a great many musicians recently who have hugely benefited off TikTok, whether it's posting their own content or having their song go viral through um, TikTok dances or similar. Um, memes, for instance, have seen a couple of songs uh, get a second life in the charts. And Twitter, a lot of musicians are really active on Twitter, but if you're maybe not someone who is uh, outspoken in one way or another, or you're representing a certain group, or you have things to say, then um, Twitter might not be for you. Um, that's not to say that you shouldn't have a Twitter. You might get some followers there, and it can be a great promotional tool. But Twitter definitely benefits the most from someone who is uh, speaking and engaging uh, as much as they possibly can. And um, the last point is to reshare great content. Um, this can be anyone, anything from someone posting your song on an Instagram story to someone doing a full-blown cover of your song. We see that quite a lot. Um, and that stuff is really valuable for you. I mean, it can feel amazing uh, just personally when someone covers your song and it can feel amazing for them if you share that song. Do you have a kind of content that you really like to reshare or really like to see come from? Yeah, I mean, I've never had anyone cover my song, so um, I can't say I've done that. But um, yeah, I would love to see that from other people. I always reshare, you know, articles, media articles that are written um, about my bands, obviously. Um, and, uh, you know, if people take footage of you um, in a live 
um, setting, I usually reshare that as well. It's really cool to give a snapshot of a live show, um, you know, an Instagram story. Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, pretty much anything, especially on Instagram stories um, and Facebook stories, it's so easy to reshare things that people tag you in. Um, and yeah, it's really nice to, I guess, you know, if someone posts something about you to repost it. Yeah, that's the thing we keep coming back to, just support the people who support you, um, whether it's because they are genuinely interested in what you are doing or they are a party who supports musicians in one way or another. Definitely support those who support you and it can be as simple as sharing something. Um, if you have more followers than somebody or they have more followers than you, either way it's beneficial. Um, one person's getting a couple, a couple more eyes on their content uh, or you are, and yeah, it's kind of a no-brainer, that one, and it's really valuable. Um, moving on, we're going to talk a bit about uh, being a mentor and being mentored. Uh, learning from others is hugely important as a musician. Every connection is a learning opportunity. Um, so a couple of the more standard places that you'll uh, meet someone who maybe has a bit of knowledge that uh, you don't or maybe it has a couple of tips and tricks that you could really benefit from. Um, a couple of the obvious places are engineers and producers that you work with, um, managers or industry that you might meet, and this might not be your manager, it could be someone who manages a band that you're really good friends with, and um, collaborators, so people who uh, uh, take photos of you, people who work on a video for you, anything like that. Um, have I missed anyone there? No, I guess maybe fellow musicians, but... Yeah, fellow musicians as well. Um, and never underestimate the value of honest feedback. Uh, honest feedback can sometimes sting a little bit, um, but it's probably the best feedback that you're going to get is that really constructive uh, feedback that's coming from a place of knowledge. Um, I will say that your friends, uh, as much as you might love them, um, can be a bit of an echo chamber and I've definitely been in situations where uh, everyone is just saying, oh, it's great, it's great, it's great, and no one's really saying, oh, you could change this, or maybe this part needs work. Is there any place that you found you received the most valuable feedback? I think, yeah, industry people, they will probably give you the most objective um, mm. feedback, which is obviously the most useful. Um, and you know, producers and engineers as well. It's, it's yeah, someone removed from your circle is good. But I also think it's important to, you know, get feedback from a variety of places because you know, what one person says isn't gospel. Um, and, you know, you shouldn't, I think it's just important to balance it out because you might, someone might tell you something, but they might not be right themselves. So, you know, get a wide range of opinions and then decide for yourself. That's very true. It is a very grey area where, when it comes to responding to feedback. Uh, you do need to balance uh, your own feelings on the matter with uh, maybe some feedback that you've got from somewhere else. You say, is that valid? Uh, do I think that needs to be changed? Uh, truly, is that a good point that this person has made? Um, so, yeah. Feedback can also be confusing. Yeah. Um, but I don't think there's a uh, there's any kind of feedback that's not really valuable. And as a uh, side note, we've talked a lot about um, workshops and free learning opportunities that have provided in New South Wales and more largely Australia in the previous workshop. So um, just a note that if you want to learn a bit more about uh, learning opportunities where you get the uh, opportunity to speak or hear from someone who's maybe in a more higher up position in the industry or has a bit more experience than you, then it's worth re-watching last week's workshop which was called uh, What Your Community Can Do For You. We'll um, link that one in the comments. Um, and on the other side of the coin, being a musician also uh, means being a public figure in a lot of ways and often somebody that a lot of people can look up to. So you need to think about a couple of things in, in terms of appearing that way. Um, what organisations do you support, for instance, and why? I think something that's become really uh, apparent in the last couple of weeks is that uh, 
you need to choose uh, what, who you speak to and what you speak out on. And this is entirely up to you, but if you are someone with a lot of followers, if you are someone who has a bit of a platform, uh, you do need to take more of a consideration. Um, to what you post. Uh, are you supporting charities? Are you supporting movements that are important to you? Uh, being a public figure does mean considering all these things. Um, another point is how will you give back to the community that you've become a part of? Have you ever done any sort of charity um, or donation thing or maybe performed at a charity event? Yeah, I've played, I've definitely played quite a few charity events. Um, one of the more recent ones was earlier this year uh, when all the bushfires were happening um, down the, the east coast of Australia. Um, I played, there were heaps of charity gigs that were put on at the time by people in the music industry. It was really heartening to see. Um, and I played one particular one that was uh, put on by Mary's um, at the Lansdowne called Mary's Loves the Bush. and. There were heaps of bands that played, there were two stages. Um, it was such an amazing night. Um, and I think they, I can't remember exactly, but I think they raised quite a lot of money um, and awareness for the cause. Um, but yeah, as I said, there was like, there were so many gigs going on at the time. Uh, so it was really awesome to see everyone banding together. As, as a musician, you'll probably end up being one of the first people who are asked to do these things. And the same will happen for a, most of the other creative industries, if you're an artist, if you're a comedian, you'll be asked to perform at these things. It is good to do them. It can, it can sometimes not be a simple yes or no question. Uh, look into the person that you're supporting. Uh, if it's something that you agree with, then absolutely go for it. You, know, you are in a position to uh, attract a couple more people and maybe attract a couple more dollars to something that's really worthwhile. Just on all of that, I think it's important to remember that you have the agency to decide all this. There are bands out there that are decisively political musicians and there are those who don't touch any of that. Uh, nothing is wrong, there's no wrong way to be a musician and it's all up to you. And I think the last thing I want to say there is that sometimes being on this platform and being out to the public does mean responding to backlash. So again, um, think about what you're saying, think about who you're supporting. Is it somebody that you really agree with? And uh, if it is, then you might have to be prepared to defend that as well. Hopefully you've never had to um, do any of that, or have you? No, Okay. thankfully not. <laughs> good, good. Um, so that sort of concludes our part on being a mentor and being mentored. Um, as a reminder, we are taking questions today. So if you'd like to uh, ask us anything about what we've said, uh, anything that you think we might have missed, or just any general questions about um, being a young musician and being in a community, um, then absolutely drop that question into the comments and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Cool. Moving on to our last section here, we're gonna talk a bit about sustaining your community. So now that we've talked about how to build a community, how to service that community, uh, how, who is out there to support you in your community and who, uh, who else might be in this community with you. Um, we're gonna talk a bit about taking that forward and uh, you know, using it, utilizing that and benefiting from that for the rest of your career. So I think just to summarize uh, what we've been talking about for these last four weeks, your community is the combination of uh, your fans and supporters so these are the people who come to your shows, buy your merch, uh, listen to your music and a ton more, any of your supporters. Uh, number two is your collaborators and professional relationships. So a couple of the people we've talked about, uh, producers, engineers, uh, photographers, videographers, managers, industry, all of that. And thirdly is your local community. Um, often the people uh, that you'll form the earliest and often the closest relationships with are the people who actually live near you, uh, the people who live in the same city as you. And sometimes something as simple as uh, the genre of music that you play can be a really unifying thing that draws together a couple of people. Would you say that's true? Yeah, I definitely would agree with that. And one thing I'd add is um, your online community, um, which links back to your genre. Um, often, 
you can go out into the wide world web, <laughs> as they call it, and find blogs that are um, dedicated to your genre um, or radio stations. And often they'll be a bit more, you know, they'll, they might be smaller, more homegrown, um, and you can really build up really close communities with people across the other side of the world um, who, just because, you know, they, they might be interested in your genre and they have a blog or a radio station that plays that kind of music. Um, so I think, yeah, it's definitely something to think about. Yeah, definitely. There's, there's, no, there's no real community too small in that sense. Uh, there's a, a niche community can actually be more powerful than something that's a bit more broad. Uh, for instance, if you play techno and you are uh, written up on a blog that has 15,000 followers that are all just hardcore techno fans, then you might get a bit more of a response than somebody with 10 times the amount of followers, but uh, maybe not necessarily as big a techno audience within their support group. So no, no, no niche is too small and often those really defined groups can be really powerful. And if you live in a city such as Sydney where we are or Melbourne or a, a, any big city across the world, there is likely to be a local scene um, that is pretty much based around your genre or at least a couple of other bands that you can play shows with, that you can collaborate with. Uh, there'll be labels who put out the kind of music that you're making. It's really worthwhile finding those groups of people. Um, and in the early days especially, they are really, really, really valuable. Moving on for that, uh, as we've said before, it's hugely important to support your fellow artists and industry. Uh, you are one of the few people who understand that the, the career that they've chosen. And if you've been doing this for a few years or longer, offering a bit of a feedback or words of advice can really mean a lot to somebody who's just starting out. And uh, the reverse is also true. Um, I mean, was there anyone when you were maybe just getting started as a musician who sort of lent a helping hand? And did that mean a lot? Yeah, I mean, I think there's there have been people all along the way. Um, yeah, producers and engineers that I've worked with have all been uh, really, you know, positive experiences and really um, helped me learn things and yeah just different people uh, in the industry have been great so yeah yeah don't be afraid to reach out to those people don't be afraid to ask a few questions I think anyone who's come up in this industry has uh, benefited from those relationships and I know it's just kind of a give and take that goes without saying um, if you're if you're a bit more experienced you're you're happy to lend a hand well most people are anyway um, and lastly, remember that your community is out there to support you as well. Last week, we talked a lot about um, the government organisations such as APRA, Music New South Wales, AMRAP and uh, local councils uh, who are sort of financially there to support a lot of musicians. But there are, as an extension of that, there are a lot of people and companies that are actively supporting uh, LGBTQI plus artists, women in music, indigenous musicians, and more. These people play a hugely important role in Australia and can be an amazing support network if um, that applies to you as well. Um, that's kind of all we had for today. Um, and I guess just as a closing thing, is it, is it fair to say that being a musician is a bit more rewarding and a lot easier when you have a few friends around and a few collaborators? Definitely. I mean, you can say the same for life, right? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> but yes, music is, um, yeah, it's definitely about your community. Um, that's what makes the whole endeavour worthwhile, I think. Um, so yeah, yeah, are good. I think there's a couple of romantic notions about the bedroom producer or the solo artist who's a cabin in the woods type. Um, those do exist, but I think largely if you're setting out there to become a musician, uh, making these connections, building a bit, uh, building these relationships will be much more valuable in the long run for, for you. Um, so that's about it. Uh, and that is the last workshop in the Building Your Creative Communities series. 
This has been a series of workshops uh, presented by Happy Mag and the City of Sydney. So a big thanks to everybody who has tuned into the series so far. Uh, all of these workshops will be available online and they will stay available online. So if you want to re-watch any of them, we'll uh, drop a link to the playlist uh, in the comments below and they will be live on Happy Mag's Facebook page forever. So feel free to pass them on, feel free to watch them back. Uh, they will not be going anywhere anytime soon. And uh, to close the series, we're actually going to be having uh, doing something a bit more fun, which is Pajama Jam. Pajama Jam is a live stream gig that we, uh, Happy Mag, started doing uh, in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. And it is a bunch of live stream sets uh, broadcast live on Facebook. It's happening this Friday, June 12th. And playing we have Ruby Gill, Reb Fountain, Huck Hastings, E444E, Jed Parsons, Mac the Knife, Lisa Caruso, and Buddy Dingo. So a bunch of really great artists from Australia and New Zealand. Uh, if you want to tune into that, it's happening this Friday, June 12th at 6 p.m. Yeah, it's going to be really good. Can't wait for it. We'll drop a link to that as well. Um, so again, thanks for tuning in. I'm Tom Cameron. I'm Claudia Schmidt. See you later. Thank you.